than nine folks baptized in the next service. We are, we are thrilled about this, super excited. Uh, so we hope you are as well. Listen, I wanna welcome you if we've never had a chance to meet. My name's Nate, I'm one of the pastors here and just so glad that you would be with us today. If you are a guest, maybe this is your first time or, or first time in a long time, uh, we hope eventually you'll call this place home, but we wanna welcome you especially. So all of our home folks, make them feel welcome. Let them know that you're glad that they're here. If you're in person with us today, we'd love for you to do something for us. You can just take out your phone right now. And then if you will text to the number 94000, that's 94,000. If you'll text new to FAC, that's just to let us know that you are here. We'll celebrate with you, promise. We're not gonna you know, overwhelm you with texts. Um, but also if you're here in person and you'd like to walk away with something free today, who doesn't like free stuff? I mean, you know, some of y'all are like, wait, I didn't get one of those. Sorry. Um, no. <laughs> if you're new and you wouldn't mind stopping by our, our desk out there in the breezeway, they'll have a gift for you if you let them know that you're new here today. We're going to be here for uh, about an hour and 10 minutes. We're going to sing together, dive into some teaching. Like I said, we got some folks being baptized today that we're excited about, but we are so thankful for every single one of you that are in this place. I want to invite you, if you're in the room, stand to your feet. We're going to join together and sing you at home, you join with us right there where you are. Let's go.
shout it out I will live, I will not die The resurrection power of Christ Alive in me And I am free in Jesus' name I will live, I will not die I will declare and lift you Continue worshiping him this morning. child of God this morning. Amen. Glad you're here. You can take a seat just for a couple of moments. I promise you it's not going to last long. 
<laughs> uh, we are so happy that you're here today. Right now is our opportunity in uh, the service to worship God as we give, to, to come to him and thank him for who he is, what he's doing in our lives and in the lives of others as we give. I wanna thank you. There's so many of you that we know uh, you give faithfully every week. You're set up with online giving or uh, something automated and we are so grateful to you because it's your gift that's making a difference, that's allowing us to make an impact for Jesus Christ in this community and around the world and we're so grateful. Some of you came today and you say, hey, I've been coming for a little bit and I, I wanna know how I can contribute to what God is doing in this church family, this expression of God's heart in the earth. Today, I'll tell you, there'll be a few ways on the screen uh, that you can give for you online. They'll have a button there that you can click, but you can choose any one of those or even as you're heading out today, there are two boxes out in the lobby hallway there in either corner that are clearly marked that you can drop a gift in. But you know, I was reading the other day, um, a guy by the name of Paul in one of his letters to the early church, the church at Corinth, he talks about our giving as being a seed, right? He talks about how uh, God gives seeds to the one who chooses to sow, who chooses to plant that seed. And it seems like kind of an odd thing to think of, but there's something really beautiful about that. Any of you who may be familiar with planting a garden in your backyard, or we have some who have been uh, in the farming industry for years who are part of First Alliance Church, a farmer, when he takes seeds and places them in the ground, there's an expectation that as those seeds are placed in that fertile soil, there'll be a harvest. And what's really neat is that when the farmer sows that seed expecting a harvest, the harvest that he expects is that others might be fed. He sows that seed believing that something will come of it and that yes, his family will be taken care of, but that he'll also see others fed. What's cool is in that same letter where Paul is talking about our giving being a seed, he says this in one translation, he gives you something you can then give away. Second Corinthians chapter 11, which grows into full formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. So I wanna encourage you this morning. As you give, don't think about giving as an obligation. Don't think about giving as paying bills. Think about giving as seeing a harvest that feeds someone else, amen? That's why we give today and we thank you for it. Well, let's pray right now together. Lord, we love you. And we're so grateful for this time together. We're grateful for what you're doing in and through this family called First Alliance. And Lord, we just wanna to continue to come to you and give you the thanks and the praise for who you are and what it is you're doing. And right now, as we give, whether we did it this week online, whether we're doing it in this moment or we'll drop something in at the end of the service. Father, we pray your blessings on the seed that is sown, that it would be a harvest that feeds others, that would change lives because of your awesome power. Bless the givers as well, Jesus. And Lord, use it all to continue to draw people to yourself, the hope that is Jesus Christ. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, right now we get the opportunity to see exactly how your gift is making a difference as in this service, we get to participate in someone making their faith public through baptism. I'm just gonna go ahead and say his name since he's already getting in there. That is Tommy Kaur. <laughs> Tommy. That's right. Tommy. This is Tommy. Hi. <laughs> oh, man. 
Y'all don't understand. I'm just, I'm going to be a wreck here in about 10 seconds. I can feel it. But anyway, this is Tommy. We love Tommy dearly. And he is a perfect example of how God is at work in the life of First Alliance Church. Tommy was actually, this is such a cool story. He was reading through the book of John. He's been using a lot of the tools that our amazing student ministry and student pastor and leaders have been giving to our kids. And he was studying through the book of John and he started asking his parents questions about baptism. And this is neat. Listen to this. When his parents asked him what he knew, by the way, that's his dad right there. That's Jeff right there. When they started asking him about, you know, if he understood what baptism was and he was able to answer those questions and, and they said, well, what about your salvation experience? And Tommy immediately was able to say, oh, I remember that. I gave my heart to Jesus October 25th, 2018. But yes, yes, I love that. It's so cool. So he's recently, he's been spending more and more time in God's word. Uh, he's been using those tools. He's been doing his quiet time, memorizing scripture. He serves here in the church and is just a blessing to so many. If he comes up to you with a camera, you smile because that man's there to take your picture. So we love this guy. Tommy just really loves Jesus and he wanted everybody to know it. And so that is why today we are excited to baptize Tommy Core. I get to baptize you as my brother in Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> oh my gosh. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? That's why we do what we do, church. That right there is the whole reason that we exist. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you right now. Just stand to your feet. Let's con just continue to honor God for who he is, what he's doing in lives like Tommy's and so many others. Let's just lift our voices. You at home, the same with us. Let's celebrate together. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, let's sing that again, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. Who you are. Sing, you are here. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, 
a God that always keeps his promises, that he does a work in all of us, that there is an unseen work that God is doing in all of our lives at all times. And yet today we can also sing in the victory and trust in the victory that Christ had for us when he rose from the dead, when he conquered the grave. So let's sing that story. was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing but not
today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Fantastic. I love that. I'm, I'm almost tempted to tell Andy to put the guitar back on and sing it again, but I won't because you're already unplugged and I love you. <laughs> so good. Y'all grab a seat this morning. What a wonderful day to be together, to just come and celebrate how good God is and how he's changed every single one of us. If you can attest to that, that you were but now. Can you just say amen this morning? So good, so good. Same for you guys online. I know that you're amening that at the same time this morning. We are continuing today in this series that's uh, really all about being the church, breaking free from this mindset of church is something we go to, that church is a facility, that it's a building, that, that in fact, church is a people and those people are called to be on move with God. And as we get a hold of that, as we grasp it and we make it our heart's desire and our intent that we move with God, we begin to see him work in ways that we never could have imagined otherwise. That's what we've been talking about for these past several weeks is what it means to be the movement, right? So I've got a question for you, just a pop quiz. You can do it here. You can do it online. We started this last week. All right. They're not going to let you cheat up in the tech booth this week, but we're going to give you the first part of a phrase and we want you to fill in the rest of that phrase. Okay. So we introduced this mission statement for First Alliance that drives who we are, how we pray, what we do. And it starts like this right here. Let's look at the first part of that statement. We exist. Now, when I finish this, I'm going to point to you and you at home, go ahead and start typing it in. We exist so that people might know Jesus. Okay. We did good on know Jesus, which that's good. We want to be strong there. We kind of tailed off a little bit. I gave you a Cliff's Notes version. It's right there at the top of the page. So you were able to cheat if you wanted to. But that's it. We exist so that people might know Jesus. We want them, heart, soul, mind, and strength to have an encounter with the God who has changed us. We want them to know him intellectually, to know him emotionally, to know him with our whole self. 
That's what our desire is for others. And that has to be at the forefront is that people would know Jesus, that they would love others, that they would do life together, that they would spend time with one another. We're going to talk about that a little bit more today, but that they would also serve people, that we would give our lives away with the aim of serving others. Not asking, what can I get from this relationship, but how can I pour myself out? And we want people to live changed every single day, looking more and more like Jesus. So that was that mission statement. And then last week, we began to unpack some of the the core values, what we can see in in scripture, in the, the letters and historical accounts that we have called the Bible, these marks of a Christian and marks of God's church what we should look like. And we talked about two things last week, and it was this, that we experience and expect life change. That we can do all of the good things in the world, but if we aren't aiming to get people to a a place where they experience life change, we're falling short. It's not that we do one or the other. We do both. We seek to be a voice in, in matters for those who are oppressed And push down. We seek to make a difference in the lives of the widow and the orphan to meet physical needs, but we want to point them to Jesus and life change as well. We pursue and praise ongoing growth. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. God, you just keep shaping me, molding me to become what you've created me to become. So we started with those last week. We're going to continue this journey looking at these values by today talking about this. We engage in and encourage honest community. Okay? Honest community. We talk about this word a lot in our society today. Uh, we, we like to make community something that's just out there and uh, right at our fingertips. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but social, quick, quick survey real quick. How many of you have some kind, maybe you don't even use it a whole lot, but how many of you have some kind of social media account? Just raise your hands real high, nothing to be ashamed of. Most of the folks, how many of you online? I uh, imagine you do because you're online. Anyway, hey, I'm grateful for you guys. I want you to know, just saying hey to you, love that you're here every week. But social media, um, I've said this before, has become a place for the highlight reel. You know what I'm talking about? We, we've talked about this even in here before. It's the place where you post your cedar plank salmon uh, with, you know, all the lemon squeezed on top. It's the place where you post your fancy vacation, right? All that good stuff. So it's very much become a place for the highlight reel. But the further we've made this journey of, of community, right? Especially in those social outlets, the further we've gone on that journey, the more that I think we would agree that it's become not just a place for the highlight reel, but also a place for the highly unlikely to be real. Y'all with me? You don't have to raise your hand, but if you've ever chosen to use a Snapchat, Instagram, or Facebook filter, and then posted a picture of yourself using said filter, listen, if your pores disappear in the photo, we know. Okay, but listen, if you go and you look at social media today, you can find all kinds. I found a couple of images of people trying to post something as, hey, look at my life, but someone else, a buddy, a friend, a parent busted them at the same time. So I've got a few examples of those. Check this one out. This one I love. This dude is a beast, Spence. Like what? And not only did you catch, he's doing it in a polo. If you're lifting weights in a polo shirt, you're my hero. That's all I have to say. But what's really interesting about this, someone already highlighted it for us. You notice this guy's a beast. He's lifting all of this weight right here, but he forgot to Photoshop the mirror. And so he's got like six plates out here on the bar, but in the mirror, we see there's one plate on there. That's it. So again, he's, maybe he's posting that to be a part of a community, but he's not being honest, right? Look at this one right here. 
This guy wanted everybody to see him climbing this insane face of a rock. Turns out he's four feet off the ground. <laughs> so while he had one of his buddies getting this shot just right, another buddy was like, ha ha loser, and took a picture of that. So maybe he was wanting to post this on some rock climbing uh, Facebook page or some kind of social outlet and he wanted everybody to see it. And so he wanted to be part of a community, but he's not being honest. Look at this next one. I don't know what to say here, really. <laughs> Aside from, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that this beautiful couple, that on their wedding day, it was pouring the rain outside. And this, this was just not okay. And the photographer said, don't worry, I got you covered. But in any case, this was the picture that got posted with the sun setting behind them in these beautiful archways that was clearly just taken in a back room with a sheet draped over something, yeah? And then one last one for you, look at this one. This kid right here wanted everybody to know he was on vacation in an amazing hotel in Dubai, except he was just sitting in front of a TV and took a picture of himself. <laughs> And see, we laugh, but that's kind of become our culture. We, we want community, but we don't necessarily want honest community. And you say, well, Nate, that's kind of the, you know, that's off on the side. Most people don't do that. Actually, enough people do it that I researched this. There's even a Nebraska-based company called Fake a Vacation <laughs> that you can send them pictures of yourself and your family and choose a vacation package and then they will create photos for your social account of you at landmarks like Red Rock in the Grand Canyon or by the Empire State Building. They will create you a vacation you never went on. <laughs> Travel company did a survey just recently. They surveyed a little over 4,000 people. And out of those 4,000 people, over 10% of them admitted they had posted fake vacation pictures on social media. And we hear that and it kind of makes for a laugh, but you know what, I think we need to dig deeper because we do those things for a reason. And whether it's out of our insecurity, whether it's simply wanting to be liked or noticed, whether it's having a fear of being less than in the eyes of someone else, so many of us are pretending our way through life. We want community, but we're afraid of honest community. And so a first alliance, we wanna break that. We wanna be a safe place and a safe people where people can just be honest, where they don't have to post a picture of a cedar plank salmon. They can post a picture of bologna and mustard or where they don't have to post a fake vacation, where they don't have to come to church and slap on a smile and pretend like everything's okay, where they don't spend time in groups only trying to hide everything that's breaking on the inside of them, where instead they can be engaged in a part of honest community where we just lay it all out there and we do it together because if anybody should be getting that right, it's the church. If anywhere should be a safe place where we can share what we're facing, what we're going through, it should be the church. But in order for that to happen, to foster an environment of honest community, it means a couple of things. First, honest community means that we build up, that we build up, that we're intentional about seeking out ways that we can support someone else, that we can encourage someone else, that we can be there for someone else. Last week, we looked at the close of one of Peter's letters. This week, uh, one of Paul's letters to the church at Thessalonica. He's closing up with a few bullet points. How many of you ever start your day like that with your kids or with your spouse? You list off a few things that you just need to, hey, you gotta know this, you gotta know this, this appointment, this event, this whatever, right? Paul's wrapping up this letter to the church and he throws out a few bullet points. And he says this, if you wanna read it, it's in 1 Thessalonians 5.14. And in 1 Thessalonians 5.14, this is one of the bullets that uh, Paul throws out there. He says this 
And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. He just gives some basic instructions. And in the middle of it all, he says these words, encourage the faint-hearted. I like that word because it's one of those that in the Greek language, it's very much like what we have in the English. It's two words kind of put together to create this uh, additional idea. So it's two words sandwiched up against each other. And the first part of this word, encourage, comes from the Greek word para, which means this, from close beside. In other words, if we're going to have honest community, we have to be in close proximity. Or more, more appropriately put, to have honest community, we've got to spend time around people. It's something we have to be intentional about doing. We have to come close beside to truly uplift, to truly strengthen, to truly support someone in their difficult times, in their despair, in their frustration, in their disappointment. We need to understand what it means to come close beside. I've shared with you guys before uh, my long medical history of whoopsies that have happened over the years, the various things that I've done to myself, the stupid situations I've gotten myself into that have ended up in some sort of injury. Well, I can remember on one occasion uh, in the, I think it was my junior year in high school, it was before Mama Sita and I were dating. Uh, we, we were just friends at this point. But how many of you grew up having intramural sports leagues in your school? You remember those? Where you would kind of create teams and you would compete with other students in your school. We had that and it happened during our lunch periods. And so you had the choice to go and sit in the cafeteria and eat or you could shove the school pizza down your gullet, drink a milk and go play volleyball. So that's what I did. I was part of a team. We were doing pretty well in this particular tournament. And on one occasion, you know, we, all the students kind of hung out in there. It was much more fun than just sitting at a table uh, in there. So we were playing volleyball and I can remember a buddy of mine, he set a spike for me and I jumped up and drilled it. It was a really solid spike. I felt great about it until about 0.8 seconds later when he was still in this set position and I came down on his foot and I mean, you know, it's always my feet. I can't help it. And it just cracked, just snapped, rolled that thing right over. It felt glorious. <laughs> and I was just, oh, and you know how sometimes you have those ankle injuries that like, you know, later that that's going to be bad, that it's, it's going to hurt and maybe have some bruising. Then you have those that blow up like a purple balloon immediately. That was this one. And so I was on the floor and I was like, oh, that hurt. Got myself off over to the bleachers. And then Michelle and her best friend, Andrea, were there together and they were hanging out and she came over to me. Again, we weren't dating yet, but this was all a ploy. <laughs> it wasn't, no, it wasn't. I mean, it worked out, but it wasn't. She came over and she was like, are you okay? We saw that. And uh, she and Andrea were like, what? pull your sock down. I pulled my sock down. It was nasty. She kind of went, Bleh. I mean, it was bad, but they ended up saying, let us help you. Let, let's get you to coach's office. By coach, they meant our sports medicine trainer and teacher that did a class on sports medicine. And they grabbed me and on either side of me, they kind of picked me up, right? And they helped me get to that classroom so that I could see the sports medicine teacher and, and, and get some help where he kind of looked at it, said, I don't know, Nate, you're gonna need to see a doctor. There might be something worse going on in there. Uh, which was whatever. And Michelle sat there and hung out and she was just, you know, a comfort in that moment. And see, we hear that, but, but, but this is the idea. They helped me maneuver when I couldn't on my own. They carried a weight that at that point I couldn't on my own. Why? Because they came close beside me. They carried me when I couldn't carry myself. And listen, it's not just that they carried me. They took me to a person that could help me find healing. They, they, they came along beside of me and they said, let's get you to someone who can help. 
We desperately need that if we're going to be about honest community in the local church. We need to be maybe physically, but not necessarily physically, but but emotionally and spiritually. We need those people in our lives and we need to be those people who come close beside, lighten the load, help navigate difficult terrain, right? And help build up. That's what we are to be about. And it's in those moments that, that we can have the confidence that in coming close beside, that the burden is lightened significantly. And it's not just in the burden, that in the victory, we get to celebrate that much more with somebody else. That we get to stand with them in honest community. The second part of that word, it's not written down for you, but the first part was para. The second part of that word is muthayamai. So para muthayamai, encourage. And muthayamai means soothing speaking, comfort and sympathy with a personal touch. A personal touch. It's not always about knowing the exact right words to say or how to, it's just about being honest. Offering them a shoulder to cry on, offering them a pat on the back and some way to go, at a boy. Just coming alongside of them. So how do we do that? How can we be people of soothing speech that come alongside others? I've got a couple things just to list for you real quick. The first is this. Don't weaponize another person's weakness. That's hard. I know. Because that, that, like, that hurts my belly. Just saying it. Ooh. Because sometimes we do this without even realizing that we've done it. But we have to be aware, we don't want to weaponize another person's weakness. You say, what do you mean, Nate? If we want to be about honest community, we have to be a safe people so people feel safe sharing. If we want to be a place where people can be honest, we have to be safe so they can be honest. So if they come and share something, a difficult situation in their family, a hurt that they're going through, a sin that they're engaged in. We don't weaponize that and go tell somebody else. Shut up in the name of Jesus, right? And sometimes I need someone in my life, it's usually my wife, that says, you need to shut up in the name of Jesus. That was shared with you, you hold on to it, you pray over it. We need to be safe people. Don't weaponize their weakness. And sometimes it's not even about going and gossiping to someone else. Sometimes it's about, well, I'm just going to keep score. Jesus had an interaction on one occasion where a Pharisee said, I thank God that I'm not like that man. How many times when someone shares with us something we're going through, not even necessarily intentionally, but our mind wanders and we say, well, thank God I'm not in that situation. Don't weaponize their weakness. Be a person, let's be a people that the weak can be weak and that we can point them to the one who can make them strong. That the faint hearted can be faint hearted without the concern that it's gonna be shared somewhere else with someone else. Don't weaponize a person's weakness. Number two, taking a step further, admit your own weakness, right? Right? It just gets harder from here. So if you didn't feel like amen and before, <laughs> oops, it's just going to get hard, okay? Admit your own weakness. We need to be real so others know they can be real. We need to just lay it all out there and point them to the one who is strong, amen? We don't wallow in our weakness, let me be clear. But it's okay to admit our weakness, I've had people before uh, ask me, you know, Nate, why? Sometimes you share some stories that are a little on the personal side and like makes us uncomfortable that you're sharing that you've got that issue and that issue. And we're not sure you should have been our pastor because you are really messed up. (laughs) Here's the thing. I've I've had people over the years say, it's, you know, I, I think it's neat that you share those stories, but why do you do that? And I'll be honest with you. I want all of us to know we're all broken. 
I want you to know that I, I'm broken and I have my weaknesses, but I want you to know the one who's made me whole. And, and, and we should be about that kind of honest community where we say, yes, we, we have fights sometimes as a married couple, sometimes good ones, <laughs> right? We call them intense moments of fellowship in our house. <laughs> I want you to know that I've struggled with things in my life, with anger and bitterness, and you need to let someone else know because admitting our weakness is where we get to see the power of God made manifest. Paul himself said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He's quoting the very words of God himself to him, and he says this, God said to him, to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect complete in weakness. So Paul responds to that by saying, therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so the power of Christ may rest upon me. The power of Christ is not in our arrogance and pride. The power of Christ is in our ability to admit that we have no power apart from him. Amen. That we're weak, but he makes us strong. Admit your own weakness. I've shared this quote with you before. Back, we did a series called Known last year, but it's one of my favorites from C.S. Lewis, his book, The Four Loves. He said, friendship is born at the moment when one man says to another, what, you too? I thought that that was no one but myself. See, honest community is built when I say, Mike, you too? I thought I was the only one. And all of a sudden, there's, there's a connection built between us that couldn't have built apart from us admitting what we're going through. It, it, it's having that heart to press into Christ as we get to know others in honest community that is so key. Last one here. Remind them who they are. Remind them who they are. When Paul writes those words, when he says to the church, I urge you, he, says a very, he sticks a very interesting word in there. He says, I urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted. He says, brothers, why? Because sometimes... We just need to know that we have a family. Sometimes, especially when a difficult conversation is coming, we just need to know we have family. So Paul says, I urge you, brothers, and he goes on by saying, to admonish the idol. See, this one's tough, but that, that word, the, the idol, it refers to those who disregard good discipline. The, the phrase to admonish was often used in the context of the military, and it was to speak of a, a soldier who would leave their ranks, forgetting who they were. And this is hard, but see, to build up, honest community that builds up means we have an understanding that that nudge, that correction is sometimes exactly what is needed. To say, uh-uh, don't do that. That, that's not who you are. That's not who he's made you to be. That sometimes we have people in our lives who will go, what's wrong with you? Stop that. Calm down. Take a breath. That's not who you are. Why? Because you can't build up if you don't build well. If you're not dealing with those issues foundationally that make us who we are, we have to build well to build up. So he says, admonish, um, admonish encourage, help the weak. And he, he tops it off by saying, and be patient with them all. Whew. Whew. Somebody just say Jesus. Because <laughs> sometimes your brothers... You, you don't really want to build up. You just want to smack them, right? You just want to, <laughs> sometimes you don't want to build up. You just want to push away. But patience with them all. Honest community means that we build up. And then this, 
honest community means that we bridge gaps. Honest community means we bridge gaps. Jesus, on one occasion, is, is speaking to those gathered together. He's speaking to his disciples. And, and he begins to share with them all manner of things. But in Matthew, in his gospel account, his record of the life and ministry of Jesus, Matthew chapter 18, Jesus says these words in verse 15. If your brother, there we go again, sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Go say, hey, this, this hurt me. This wounded me. Between you and him alone. Everybody say alone. Type that in, alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother absolutely beautiful as Jesus gives these instructions specifically for his followers, for the church. He's talking to them about those sins, those offenses that take place between two people, okay? He's not talking about the sins that someone commits that you're like, oh, he's talking about when someone hurts you or offends you. And he gives the instruction that we are to be about bridging the gap. He says, if your brother sins against you, you go to him and tell him his fault. This is the expectation that Jesus has for us as his followers, that when we have difficulty in this life, honest community says, I'm gonna go talk to you. And I'm gonna tell you it hurt. And I'm gonna tell you it caused me pain. Let me ask you this. How many of you, do we have any like courtroom drama TV shows in, in the room? Uh, any of you that just love that stuff, the courtroom drama? Yeah, a few of you. Let me ask this way, because you're not going to admit it. How many of you, let's go way back. How many of you ever watched Perry Mason, right? <laughs> Every one of you just dated yourself right there. <laughs> no, no, no. You saw it on Nick at night. I know, whatever. Uh, go a little bit further. How about Matlock? You ever watched Matlock before? Yeah. Uh, shout out to my mom if she's watching Doom Doom uh, Law and Order. And if you, you knew, some of you knew what that was. That's hilarious. More recently, there have been shows like uh, Suits and Bull and all these courtroom drama kinds of shows. They're really, really fascinating. I, I do like to watch them. Um, but what's cool is you see the same scenario every time. They something takes place and then they begin to put together a case, right? They go back through all the law books. They look at previous precedent in regards to a similar case. They, they begin to gather the evidence that they need. They talk to various experts. And then on some of those occasions, I love these, that let the, those, those occasions where they're in the courtroom and the judge will say to the defense, do you have any further witnesses? And they'll say something like, Yes, Your Honor. In fact, I have a surprise witness. Right? So, oh, it's going to get good now. You know something's going to happen. That's not real life, but it, it happens in those shows. And, and we watch those things, and, and it's interesting how it all comes about. And the goal for the team, for the legal team, is to get what? A win. That's it. All the evidence, all of the discussions, all of the witnesses, it's all to get a win, and unfortunately, I think that at times we have handled conflict in our relationships where there should be honest community, we've handled it more like a courtroom drama. And what we've done is as soon as we get hurt, we gather together those who are on our side, start making phone calls, our teleministry. Hey, how do you feel about this? Right? We, we gather together those who are on our side. We involve the expert opinions of those who can help support our position. All so that we can get a win. But honest community is not about winning arguments. Honest community is about doing everything that we can to be like Christ and build bridges, restoring relationship, 
Does it happen every time? No. No, if we're just honest, if we're being honest in community, no, it doesn't happen every time. But I will say eight times out of 10, when you go to somebody and say, man, that that hurt, that was painful. A lot of times you'll get, I am so sorry. I had no idea. I would never try to hurt you. I, I apologize. Now, there are those occasions where you approach someone and you say, I want you to know that really hurt. And they'll say, I'm sorry, but they'll say something more like, well, I'm sorry that's how you feel. It's where you just put them in your pockets and you take a deep breath. But the goal of honest community is to say, I'm going to address this one-on-one. We're going to talk about this. And when we do that, all of a sudden, our, our perspective changes from being set on burning bridges to instead building them. So at First Alliance, in pursuit of honest community, we're going to be about this right here. Go to the right person. Go to them. The person who said or did something that hurt you, wounded you, the person who sinned against you, go to them. Talk to them. Go to the right person. Go at the right time. For some of you, you don't need to have that conversation right after it happened. Because if you go immediately, as soon as you, you'll blow up, it'll turn into this, you need to take a pause, pray over it, and then you need to go at the right time. Even Jesus says, now listen, you've got to make sure you address this in a timely fashion. Because to come before him and praise him and honor him, you want to make sure that you're in right relationship with others. But go to the right person, go at the right time, and listen, go with the right attitude. Go with an expectation that you can both come out of this better for having had the conversation. But Nate, what if they, well, you don't need to chase that question. But Nate, what if they, no, 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 no. Just go to them, right person, right time, right attitude. And hear me, we're not going to rush to disputes, pulling others who know nothing about the matter into the conversation. We're we're not going to, when we talk about the right person, it is that person. We're not gonna bring somebody else along who agrees with us. We're not gonna call up the pastors and say, pastor, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. No, I can tell you, our whole staff, if you call them up and say, so-and-so hurt my feelings, you know what we're gonna say? Just talk to them. That's gonna be the whole conversation that you'll have with us. Nate, so-and-so hurt my feelings. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna pray for you, pray for them. Have you talked to them? Well, well, no. Okay, love you. Matthew 18, go talk to them. That's it. And you're like, that's really uncomfortable, Nate. Talk to Jesus. (laughs) Now, understand that the idea there is to seek to bridge the gap, to reconcile, to make it right. It's not about winning, it's about growing. And that's hard in a culture where we have access immediately to Yelp and Google review, right? Like you go to a restaurant or you go down to the quick lube, get you a tire change and something doesn't go the way you want it to, you can sit right there in their waiting room or right there at your table. I cannot believe the absolute garbage piece of trash that this organization is. I swear that I will never come back to this establishment ever in my life and I encourage you to do the same. The end. Goodbye. <laughs> we do it. We do it about the restaurant. We do it. We, people do it with churches. Pastor didn't talk to me fast enough so I'm going to blast them on Google review. Sorry. You know, it's hard to do, but we have to be about, no, I'm going to go to the person. Now, if they aren't willing to listen, Jesus addresses that. Look, he says, but if they don't listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Now, this does not mean take two people who agree with you. Read that. 
It's to establish evidence in the presence of two or three witnesses. In fact, it might actually be better for you to take someone with you if they won't listen that really doesn't know anything about the situation and that is willing to say to you, I don't want to hear it. Don't say it in front of me. And that the two of you get together and those witnesses say, hey, we're here to pray. We're here to listen. We're here to encourage. He gives a way for that. And again, it's to build that bridge. And listen, sometimes they just won't listen. But as far as it depends on you, you can be at peace. You can know you've done what is right. And let's be careful to bridge the gap from both sides. Let's be careful to remember that we're called just as much as we are to go to someone who's hurt us, that when someone comes to us that says that hurt, that we don't take it as an immediate thud in our gut and look to go on the defense and say, well, you know, you were just a so-and-so and a whatchamacallit, and if you just, no, no, no. That instead we go, wait a minute, in humility, I'm gonna hear what you have to say. I'm gonna seek the heart of God, and maybe, just maybe, I'll have that moment where I go, oh, I'm so sorry. Because that's honest community. And Jesus tells us why we do it. He says in verse 18, truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at verse 19, says this. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. I don't think it's coincidence that within five verses, Jesus talks about resolving conflict between two brothers or sisters in Christ and that he talks about what can happen when two agree. Because when we're willing to take that step and resolve those differences, deal with the sin, deal with the hurt, all of a sudden where there was once division, there's now unity. And now heaven can invade earth as we agree and say, you know what? It's more important that we're right with one another and right with God than that we fight about this for the next six months, six years, or 20 years. Bridging that gap. And so this ties to that statement, our vision, our goal that we have, that we'll come alongside people, don't worry about the number, on a personal discipleship journey as they connect with others deeply. I'll leave you with this and then I'll pray. Honest community equals people. People equal messy. Honest community equals messy. It's not always comfortable. It's not always fun and exciting. A lot of times it is. Sometimes it's hard, but it's worth it. Amen? So this week, what do you do with it? You've got it on your notes there, you at home. Hopefully you can look at it. This week, choose to build someone else up. That's, that's it. Just do that. Build someone out. Come alongside, close beside, with soothing speech, with encouragement. Build someone up. Maybe for you, you need to be open to being built up this week. Maybe you just need to say, I'm going through a tough time. And I need someone who can just come alongside me and help carry some of this weight. Maybe this week is the week for a tough Matthew 18 conversation. And instead of holding it on in here and what you need to do is sit down and just say, I need, to, I need to share this with you. Doing so might just allow heaven to invade earth. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time together. I thank you for these amazing people. We are blessed to be able to say that we know honest community is something that already exists here in this family at First Alliance, but we want to build upon that and foster that even more so people can come and feel safe, that they can be themselves, nothing hidden, all things healed. Lord, I pray if there's one today that they need to start that journey of honest community by saying yes to you, that today would be the day that they pray, that they say, Jesus, I am a sinner and I need you to save me believe you died on the cross and rose from the grave so that I could have 
community, relationship with you. Come into my heart and life. If that's you today in this room and you say, Nate, I I want to be part of a family like that. And I hear you. I hear you when you say the only way to be a part of that family is to know Jesus Christ, to really just give myself to him. If you're here today and you wanna begin that relationship with Jesus Christ, will you just slip your hand right up beside your head? Just wave at me, make sure I see you. and Say, Nate, that's me. You online, you'll have the same opportunity. They'll give you a chance just to wave your hand and say, today, I wanna begin a relationship with Jesus. And if that's you, I I want to beg of you, don't leave today without allowing us to celebrate with you and encourage you. God, we love you. We thank you for this time. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We love you. I want to encourage you, get plugged in here at First Alliance. One of the ways you can get involved in community is through groups. We got a whole wall we just put up out there this week that tells you about groups here at the church. Go check it out. Find out how you can get involved in deeper and more intimate connections. Have a great week, guys. We love you. Take care.